mentality of um, robots taking over and the potential for things to go wrong which admittedly is quite high probably not for the reasons actually I'm not even sure a lot of people in that camp actually resort to reasoning to come to their conclusion it's more of an ideological objection there's the people that think it's the greatest idea since well, vaccinations. I heard Alex Roy talking about on Twitter how if you're um, if you're anti-vax, you're just as bad as no. If you're anti-autonomous driving, you're just as bad as anti-vaxxers. Which is, uh, you know, I can get what he's saying, but um, the whole point he's trying to get across there is the amount of lives that will be saved from the introduction of autonomous driving will be massive and it's, it's absolutely right absolutely accurate in that regard I was at a um, transport infrastructure conference about three years ago in Brisbane and the guy that was presenting and talking about autonomous driving then said exactly the same things billions of dollars that will be saved from not having to um, react respond and treat victims of road trauma which is fantastic it's that is the kind of outcome that should be justifying massive investment from legislators governments lobbyists everyone should be on board with this stuff and there's a lot of people that I do have an ideological objection to the idea of um, autopilot for cars. Oh, that's right. Let's go back to that point for a second. Autopilot. Um, there was the crash from the guy in the Tesla who was on autopilot and ran into the back of a truck because he was allegedly watching a movie or something, not paying attention. And then, I mean... I don't know what sort of expectation this person had. I don't know what sort of expectation that Tesla had placed on their vehicle to the customer when they say autopilot. Because when you say autopilot, there's a level of interpretation that goes on in the head of the customer versus the interpretation of what autopilot actually means. Now, autopilot is not just something for aircraft, it's also been used on boats for millions of years. Slight exaggeration. But essentially what it does, it looks at what your location is and it can drive the tiller or the rudder of the, of the watercraft in order to maintain a course. You can still run into shit. You still need to look where the fuck you're going. The whole reason an autopilot works okay when you're in the ocean is because you're in the fucking ocean and there's no other boats in the immediate vicinity and if somebody else is on autopilot going through the middle of the fucking ocean and you're going through the middle of the fucking ocean and you run into each other that is incredibly unlucky when you're on autopilot and the car is keeping you on the road and you run into another vehicle that has more to do with your attention than what it has to do with the capability of something that's called an autopilot because autopilot 
still lets you run into things. Having said that, you would expect that modern technology, I mean, I've driven a number of cars now that all have the same radar cruise control where it detects something in front of you and slows down and keeps a, a gap. So autopilot, you can still run into shit, okay? So temper your expectations. So, what's, what are my objections to... Oh, I need to replace those wipers. What are my objections to autonomous driving? Aside from the fact that I don't like the idea of removing the need for us to make decisions because, you know, that's part of what makes humans better than animals. We can look at things, predict the future, and make a decision. If we stop doing that, you remove the need to be able to make decisions about something like driving a car. The rest of the world is already at that point where you don't need to assess a situation anymore. You can just walk into a new environment, and there's all these fucking warning signs. I probably need to, didn't need to swear then, but. No, I did. There's all these fucking warning signs everywhere telling you what you can and what you cannot touch. If you touch something and you hurt yourself, chances are you can sue somebody because they should have had a warning sign. Seriously, this is, this is where we're at. You know, if you can't make a decision for yourself and something bad happens, probably because you haven't exercised any sort of common dog, which is common sense for those who don't know. The consequence for you hurting yourself is no longer on you, it's on the person who didn't put a sign there to tell you not to touch that pointy thing, that sharp thing, or that thing is that is potentially hot. So there's that part of the environment that's all already taken away our need for reasoning and thinking. It's going to be hard. So we've already got warning signs and stuff everywhere and things that stop us hurting ourselves and all that sort of stuff. This is mostly in the Western world, by the way, because when I was in Israel at the start of this year, they didn't have quite so many warning signs. And in fact, a lot of the stuff that I was crawling around on, like there was an ancient city called uh, Caesarea, I think it was. You can climb all over that stuff. It's like a 2,000 year old town or city. Nothing's caged off. You can walk over these old, um, old buildings and old rooms and these crumbling ruin looking things. If that was in Australia, there'd be like a fucking six foot high fence around it with bloody um, camera surveillance and security guards. In Israel, they're like, we've got heaps of those, just crawl on that shit, do whatever you like, we don't care. So in the Western world, there's warnings, there's gates, there's guards, there's fucking high vis, there's safety supervisors, there's people telling you how to pick your ass. I don't know if you really needed advice for how to do that, but there's all these things that already remove the need for you to be able to make your own decisions. So when you get in the car, and this environment also removes the need for you to make decisions because all you do is go in and the only decision you need to make is, uh, I want to go to Noosa and you press a button and the car takes you away. That's another little part of the modern environment where the need to make decisions has been eroded. So, there's a benefit. Billions of dollars and thousands of lives saved versus, I guess, some level of de-evolution. Actually, you can't really say it's de-evolution because you're still moving forward in time. There's just a degradation in the capacity of the human brain to make decisions. The capacity to be reasonable. 